Alright, how are you guys doing? This is Neil from ipaintgirls.com and I'm continuing on with the series for how to draw comics. And I want to do one more part for paneling because there are some things I forgot to mention with paneling. Uh, this is the recent page I just did. I actually decided to completely redo my comic book for the video game for my alien shooter. I decided to start it different and this is how I'm starting it now. So if you want to pause and read this you can. But um, you can also go to my gallery, go to ipaintgirls.com and gallery if you want to check it out. That way you can read it there. Anyway, so I decided to give it a whole a different beginning. But what, what I wanted to show here is another way that you can show, you know, that you want to go what, what panels to read next is to have them offset like this. Like, notice that this one's longer than this one down here. So if you have them at different lengths, even if you have three up here and three down here, this makes it clear that you go that you read the top ones first from left to right and then you read the bottom ones and then you keep going down the page like that and so the, yeah, I can actually have the same amount of spacing as well between all of these and I'm actually going to move this over so it's the same as that I just haven't done it yet I'm just you know those are final touches I go and put on uh, later but I'm, I'm going to go fix all that before I finalize them anyway so that's another trick and I wanted to show you like with Sky Doll, and I have to um, pause and find a part of Sky Doll that's appropriate because it is a um, graphic novel or a series for adults. Oh, actually, uh, duh, before I do that, there's another thing I wanted to mention here really quick. So remember before I mentioned the interrupting thing. So here's an example of how you can show interruption by overlapping the bubbles. And also I'm going to show in this uh, tutorial how to, oh, not, I guess it's a tutorial, how to do um, all of this in Photoshop without because I did this entire page in Photoshop without Illustrator and then another trick you can do to show like especially it's especially good for action sequences you can have this kind of um, shattered glass effect you can also have spaces in between these as if they're individual frames but I just set it up like this instead but it kind of shows like quick action happening so this conversation you know boom 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 and if it was uh, like an action sequence you know it, it's cool to break things up once in a while you know to break break up the monotony of just squares alright so this page is good so as you can see it's um what they did the same technique here the top two frames as you can see are offset from the bottom frames. There's the same amount of space, but you notice there's a little bit more space between the top frames and the bottom frames to show you know that you don't read the bottom frame next. But just by the way it leads into the next frame, by the offsetting I showed you before, you can see that you're supposed to read the top two frames first and then the bottom two frames. And then uh, they, they continue doing that even throughout the, the next frames. And then finally at the bottom there's this frame there. Anyway, uh, Sky Doll is an awesome series. It's a three-part series. I recommend reading it. It's just a really great story, great comic work. It's actually what inspired my coloring for the comic book I'm working on now. Okay, so when working with Photoshop, you have a background here. I'm going to make a new layer. This layer is going to be my borders layer. I, I usually right-click on this and actually name it that. So what you do is you set up your panels here. So let's say we kind of wanted to do, we wanted to follow that uh, system. I'm going to hold down the shift key now. I wouldn't actually do it this way because it's not going to be perfect this way. Let's say the first two are like this. Then I want to offset. So I either want to make this one longer or shorter so that you know it's clear which one to read next. Even if there's the same amount. Actually, you know what I should do is um, I'll undo that. I'm holding down the shift key to make more than one square at a time. So I'll make this one like that. Put these so you notice um, I would do each one individual because see I'm not getting the exact length I want. And let's say I wanted the bottom one be like this. So the basic setup is to put more space between the, the columns you want to be read. So like this is red, this is red, this is red. There's more space between that than there are between this. So that's just a good thing to do. Now once you have the marquees, I'm just going to pretend all this is perfect even though it's not. Then you go to edit, stroke, and I'm going to have it at three pixels. It really depends on um, the you know DPI you're working at. So since I'm at 300 DPI at 8 by 10, I might even want to make those a little bit thicker. Um, at 72 DPI for for like web viewing, it's fine at uh, three pixels, but I might want to bump it up to like five pixels. But anyway, this actually is fine too. 
All right, so there, there that is, and then fit to screen. Then what you do is you take your magic wand tool and go like this. You hold down the shift key and then click in each square. And then go to select inverse, and then you can fill this in with a color and make it different than white for now, just for you can see that it's a different color, like so. Now you have that layer and you save it like that, and that, that's a layer that goes on top. Now your bubble, your bubble layer goes on top of this. Now to do bubbles is actually really easy as well. The way I do is I make a new layer, I name it bubbles, and then I go to this tool here, and I use the round rectangle tool. Now you can make this however you want. You can make it more round, less round. And up here, make sure you click this button, which is the fill pixels. And then you pick the color you want. So I'm going to pick white. And also I like to put a, um, a layer style, a drop shadow. And um, let's see here. Anyway, so I pull this down here, the passy like that, set this to like three. Set that like that, something, something about like that. Then when you draw it, you can see there's a little drop shadow there. You can make the drop shadow more or less. It's you know, and then to do outlining. So what I would do is I would throw my speech bubble. Let's say I wanted a speech bubble in here, and then after I have all my speech bubbles, I hold down Control and I click right here on the layer, this little square in here. Holding down the Control, click that, puts the marquees around it. Pick black, edit, stroke, and I'm gonna go by two since I'm at. Uh, probably go by one too. I usually do one, but maybe because I'm at a higher resolution, that'll look fine. So yeah, and I can make the drop shadow a little bit bigger too, since I'm working on such a high resolution. Right, so anyway, there you go. That's how you can do that. And then after you have that done, you can take your pen tool on that same layer, and then work with white, and you would be using a uh, tablet to do this perfectly and you can see the little drop shadow there is coming through and you you know just draw your little thingy there actually I would do that even before I did the lining I forgot to tell you that so you want to do that first and then then do the hold down control and click the layer and then go to image and uh, or excuse me edit and stroke that way you can stroke it and anyway go ahead and get rid of that go to fit the screen Oh yeah, also I forgot to mention, there's another th there's other things you can do that are creative too. Um, like for this here, I wanted to show, I didn't want to do a separate frame, but I wanted to show that she's looking through the people and what she sees. So I just did this little deal right here, like a line coming out with the circle showing that, you know, she's looking through the people. By the way, this is set to my desktop, and this is what I like to do. Like when I finish a work, I like to set it as my background. That way I look at it a lot. Um, I'm forced to look at it a lot, and then I start noticing things that are wrong with it. Right, and if you look at modern comics, like this is a modern uh, Batgirl comic, for the most part, most of the pages are standard, you know, squares, rectangles. But they do mix things up once in a while. So this page here mixes it up. There's a lot of action, notice. And so they're using these diagonal type lines to break up the panels. Uh, so that shows that, you know, there's a lot of action. It, it just naturally kind of feels more chaotic and which fits the action. So definitely don't, don't, uh, don't think you can't experiment because you can as you can see here and then if I were to zoom in also they have the black borders And another thing you can do which we kinda covered last time is you can do a full page image you know where so that the full page image is, image is done and before it was just the top but here's the full page image is done and then there's panels on top of the page that is on top of the full page illustration I can't find an example, but you can also have panels overlapping like this to show the passing of time. Here once again, the diagonal cuts to show chaotic action, again from the same Batgirl comic. Alright, so that pretty much covers it. Feel free to ask me questions. Just go ahead and type a comment. Um, you know, don't feel like you can't ask me questions. I try to get all. I try to get to all questions, so um, you know, I will most likely answer you. Also, I need your help on what I should do next. I want to continue doing the uh, comic book series, but what do you want to see covered next about comics? 
that you know you want to see how it's done with you know Photoshop whatever see the process of it being done you know what what about comics that you think that would be helpful for you so please leave that in the comics or uh, comics please leave that in the comment section I'd appreciate it what I was thinking about doing next is just my overall workflow because when you're doing comics or any type of paneling work like that, like storyboarding, you, you have deadlines, and we're talking quick deadlines. I was just looking at a job right now, uh, and it was um, it was 60 pages. This is just coloring, but 60 pages in two weeks, and that's just coloring, nothing else. But each page had four frames, so or four panels in two weeks. That's crazy, man. Like that's gonna take more than one colors, I think. Alright, I'm already over 10 minutes, so thank you. Leave comments, appreciate it.